Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's class, the Windsor Newton Lotus Wall Art class. My name is Tim DePack, and I will be, and I'm your moderator today, and I'm being joined by Shalene Louise, who will be your artist instructor for today's class. And Shalene will be taking you through today's class by providing information about the products that she's using, as well as, well as showing you how to perform some of her favorite watercolor painting techniques, all while creating these beautiful lotus flowers using the Windsor Newton Cotton Watercolor Pocket Sketcher I'm sorry, watercolor set paint. <laughs> She'll also give you a sneak peek of her upcoming class in February, which is great. It's a part two of something that we done last year. There was a sketch outline that was available for the class. If you did not get that, we will provide that in the link for you to download. Uh, and on completion of this class, you'll get a survey in your email. Uh, please let us know what you thought about the class, how we did, and if there's any particular topics that you'd like to see Shalene perform in future classes. Uh, please feel free to follow along and paper Shalene or sit back and relax and enjoy the class. There will be a replay of the class 24 hours on michaels.com and the YouTube channel. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Shalene. All right, hello everybody. Welcome to today's Lotus class, our first class of, my first class of 2022. So here is what we're going to be painting today. It's a little bit overexposed, but we are going to be painting these Lotus with uh, these leaves and this kind of bluish watercolor water background. Um, so we're going to do some techniques I don't typically do, which will be fun. And uh, just so you guys know, we just moved into a new house and we don't have doors. So my dogs will probably be coming in and out. <laughs> so just be prepared for the sound of little dog paws. Um, okay, so let's switch to overhead view and I'll talk you through some supplies and then we can get going. All right, so today I'm going to be using seven by 10 watercolor cold press paper. Um, I have here a few different sizes of watercolor brushes. Whatever you have is gonna be just fine. I have, uh, I think I have a one, five, six, um, and a few other ones off to the side here. I have paper towel, water, and I have my water in a, um, a gravy dish today. <laughs> That was just what was handy. I don't know where all my paint supplies is right now. Um, and then for colors today, I'm going to use uh, a few different ones. I'm gonna use uh, sap green. Let's pull this in. I'm using sap green, cadmium yellow, ultramarine blue. Uh, what else was I going to use? Uh, burnt sienna and uh, alizarin crimson. And my palette is kind of a mess right now, but ooh, I'm just gonna go with it. I'm also just using a regular number two pencil. If you have something like an F pencil, that might work a little bit better, but just for the sake of you being able to see my sketch really well, I want to just use a darker pencil. And then if you have something, just like uh, another piece of paper, uh, another piece of watercolor paper, grab that or grab just something with a straight edge. I'm gonna use a ruler. Um, and if you don't have that, don't even worry about it. Just follow what I do. So I'm going to use my click pencil here. Let me pull this out of frame. I'm gonna just gonna maybe make it just the width of the ruler, which is about an inch on each side. And you can do this freehand if you want to, but it helps to have a straight edge. You could also use masking tape if you have that or washi tape. And we're gonna give ourselves a little border here. And then just because I'm kind of in a perfectionistic mood, I'm gonna just get rid of those little extra lines there at the top. Okay. So let me pull my sketch into frame. If you've already sketched ahead of time, that's awesome. If you are sketching along with me, also great. So Let's see here. So the, my process for sketching this is I'm going to just kind of map out placements before I commit to any, uh, any lines. So here's kind of where I'm gonna have this main flower. I know that's probably hard to see. <laughs> that's very faint, isn't it? Um, I'm gonna, and you can do this really lightly yourself. I wouldn't draw it too dark quite yet. This smaller bloom, 
this leaf back here. Also, our dog right now is losing his mind because my husband took my son with him to Lowe's and Pablo, our dog, is very jealous. <laughs> He always wants to go for a ride. Okay, so I have it kind of mapped out. So now I'm gonna start committing to some of these um, darker lines. So I'm gonna start by drawing this center stamen of this lower lotus flower. Kind of just map out where the center of this flower is going to be. And let me pull this in just a little bit tighter for you. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here with this. Ken Burns zoom here. Okay, so I'm gonna draw these three larger petals first. So notice they're kind of, um, this one's kind of like an almond shape. And then these two are just behind it. And I'm not gonna lie, sometimes explaining the sketching process is harder to me than explaining the uh, painting process. So I start off these classes with the hardest part. <laughs> All right, got a larger petal just underneath it. Petal here. We're just kind of starting to fan these petals out. This one here has this little line next to it, which kind of gives the impression that it's starting to curl over towards the right. I will say this is something that if you, uh, like, I would definitely recommend like, you know, taking your time with sketching. It's, it's definitely hard to get it right, especially if you're a beginner. I think a lot of people can get really discouraged um, at this step, because it, it, if it doesn't feel quite right, I know it's easy to be kind of hard on yourself. So give yourself some grace. And if you need a little bit of extra time, take the time you need, okay? All right, so we got a larger petal up here. That shape isn't quite right, so I'm gonna, Fix that. Got a large petal over here going off to the right side. And notice it kind of has like the two lines here on this bottom edge. And that's giving the impression that it's folding. It's kind of starting to face upward. Another smaller petal here. Calm down, you're okay, come here. Calm down. Okay, so these little petals that are kind of peeking out from behind these ones. Got one more here. All right, so. My first thoughts is it's, uh, it's not exactly the same placement as my sketch. It's a little bit over to the left, but that's okay. One sketch is never gonna be exactly the same as the next. Okay, so over here, I'm gonna work on this leaf here. So kind of creating a little center spot, go ahead and start drawing lines that are reaching in every direction. And then what I want you to do is kind of start splintering these these veins outward, okay? I don't know if there's a better word for splintering. It's probably a proper term for what that process is called in nature, but <laughs> I'm just calling it splintering. All right, makes sense? Let me hold that up for you. So that's what a lotus leaf looks like. Um, down here at the bottom, go ahead and draw just five lines. Notice that I, 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 you know, I really traced how thick they're gonna be. You can do that or you can also just, um, you can just draw some lines. I think I'm just gonna do that and I'll, I'll add some thickness to them later. And you definitely don't want them to be just like, you know, wanna make sure that there's some curves to them. All right, I'm gonna work on this little bud here, kind of just have these unopened petals. Okay. 
Okay. And also, I'm going to recommend just go ahead and erase some of these unnecessary lines. All right, now let's go ahead and do, let me think here. Let's do this flower up here. So I'm starting with that center stamen and then I'm gonna draw just like I did the same process. We're gonna start with these petals that are just underneath it. Get the shapes of these, these right and it's gonna make the rest of the flower look really nice. Hey Pablo, come here. Come here, bud. So we kind of have this almond shape. And then let's draw these petals that are underneath. The thing about doing that process I did at the beginning where I kind of mapped it out is you definitely get a lot of pencil markings that you don't want. The less pencil markings you can have when you start painting, the better, because it does, they do get harder to erase the more you have and um, the more you paint over them, <laughs> it gets kind of difficult to erase. All right, so I'm working around, just gonna start adding some more petals, make some of them overlapping one another. It's usually easiest to start from the center and then work your way around but whatever, whatever feels right for you. So notice these, these petals over here, these three. Notice how every single one of them has a, an extra little line kind of inside of the petal. Um, and that's gonna just start creating the impression that the petals are starting to turn away. Starting to give a little bit of dimension, huh? And I'm going to just draw a couple more back here. And that feels, that feels good to me. I think I need to make this one extend a little bit more. Just kind of take inventory, look at it, see if it feels balanced to you. If you need to tweak anything, this is a good time to do it. If you can get your sketch just right, not perfect, but that's, that's maybe not a good way to say it. But if you can feel really good about your sketch, it really is gonna make your, your final um, painting something that you're, you're gonna be really proud of it and really happy with it if you can get that sketch right. All right, so there's the stem. All right, so last thing to sketch is I'm going to paint or draw this, uh, this larger leaf that's just behind here. So th these are very interesting, the lotus leaves, they actually kind of like rise up in the air and create almost like a, think like an ice cream cone shape, just a little bit. So it's kind of like, in here is, is uh, it's like going down, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so let's start by getting this larger kind of bean, kind of a bean shape, right? So it's coming out from behind here, and then it goes kind of up and then back down. Then we have this kind of a, it's maybe a funnel shape. I think it's saying an ice cream cone, you get the same idea, right? <laughs> okay, so then we're going to do the same idea that we did over here. We're gonna have these lines going towards the center. So kind of every, you know, every so often, let's just draw these lines reaching upward. And then we're gonna start splintering out again. And then we'll do the same thing underneath. And I'll hold that up for you. All right, so I think that this is a pretty good 
place to get started with painting. This is a, we'll see how time goes today, but this, this could be a, a little bit of a, a full length class, I'll say. <laughs> we'll see how it goes, but. All right, I'm going to get some colors mixed here. So, like I said, I forgot to clean my palette first. So let me just make some room here. So I'm just gonna dip this paper towel edge. And I'm going to clear off some of the colors I will not be using today just to make some room. Uh, okay, that was it. I think I'm pretty much going to use. <laughs> I won't use that one. I am not usually super concerned about keeping a super tidy palette. It's just not exactly my personality. So I like to kind of let stuff bleed together. Sometimes I find kind of interesting colors that I wouldn't have necessarily found if I was keeping my palette really clean. So, all right, I'll start with, let's see here. I'm going to get started with some sap green. So I'm gonna use my, the largest brush I have here. I'll use the six. If you have anything larger, eight, 10, you can use that. And I'm gonna do an even layer of color. Let me make sure you can see this well. So go ahead and get a nice puddle going here. Just a good amount of water and pigment. I want this color to be nice and nice and flowy. And let's go ahead and just paint um, all of our green things. Just a nice even layer here. And go ahead and paint over the stem of this flower because that's going to be green too. I think this is the first class I've ever done where I've um, did a like a colored background. Usually, I just keep the background white. I can't think if there's been another class I've taught for Michaels with a background. So. Because of that, I, I really tried to, as I was planning through this class, think through the kind of steps of, you know, making sure one section is dried so that we can paint, you know, it's, it's difficult with, with watercolor, you have to, you know, be aware that if you bring another color to the palette, to your paper and it's wet, it's going to bleed. So I'm really trying to think through these steps so that we don't have too much bleed. But if you do find today that there is any bleed from one color into the next, just grab a paper towel and just, just dab it right where it's starting to bleed. And it'll be just fine. It'll lift that color right out and it'll stop that spread. Pablo, come here. Come here, buddy. All right. Uh, I think just these stems down here now. So like I said, I was gonna add a little bit of width to those, just like whatever the width of your brush is, whatever feels normal. You can maybe make a couple of them a little thinner than the others. All right. So now I'm going to clean off that brush. I'm going to grab some cadmium yellow. And I'm going to go and paint this, uh, the stamen of these flowers. Just cadmium yellow all, all the way across here. And then the same thing up here. All right, and now I'm going to grab some alizarin crimson, which is color I use probably more than any other color, sap green and alizarin crimson. Those are definitely my, those are definitely my go-tos. Those two and burnt sienna, I probably use more than any other colors. So 
get a mixture of alizarin crimson, and this is gonna be a watery mixture. This is gonna be just our first layer of color. And I do want this to be a fairly light pink. So you want a good amount of water in there. And then I wanna start with whatever section uh, is not gonna to touch green quite yet. So go ahead and start at the top here. It's a little bit too water or a little bit too dark. So just add a little bit of water to that mixture. And you can just carefully avoid that yellow if that yellow is looking like it wants to spread into that pink color and just go right up next to it, but don't touch it. And we're doing just an even layer of very light alizarin crimson mixture. And you keep it light by making sure there's a lot of water. If you have too much color, you can just blot it on your paper towel a little bit. All righty. Once that's done, let's move to this one, which actually now that I'm thinking about, that would have been a good one to start with. <laughs> Because that one's not touching any anything that could bleed, but oh well. You got that one perfect, Shalina, right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and now the last, last of the big flower. So I'm just going to go along this outer edge here, try and get a nice straight line there. And actually my, you might find this be true where you are, but all, I'm pretty sure all this is already dried. So I'm not, I'm not super worried about this. It dries pretty quickly, doesn't it? Especially if you're not using, uh, I don't know, I guess too much water. If it's a super watery blob, you drop, it takes longer to dry. Paper you're using too, right? Cause you're using professional watercolor paper. And it's Mm -hmm. yep. It's almost drying as you see the brush going on. There. It really does dry pretty, pretty darn quick. And I'm, this is a rougher texture here. And so that, that does help to dry really quickly. And it's also just a really dry, sunny day where I am. Actually, it's kind of warm out too. So my, yeah, I think this is a pretty warm or a pretty dry season of the year here. If you're really concerned, what you could also do is grab a uh, blow dryer. I've done that a couple of times, but usually I find that's pretty unnecessary. All right, so that is a good place to move on to the next step. So I'm going to go back to my leaves. So I'll come back to this sap green, just pure sap green. And what I want to do is start adding a little more depth of color. So what I want to do is just go along this outer edge up here. And I'm using, this is the size six brush. You could use a size five. I might switch to a five here in a second. Just go along this outer edge. And then use a different brush. Use the size five brush, just a damp, clean edge. So this is just a clean brush. I just dampened it, blotted it on the paper towel. And I'm going to just use that damp edge to pull this color downward a little bit. And then I'm going to just go between those two brushes. So one color, I'll use, one brush I'll use to drop a little bit of color. I'm gonna start following the, the, these veins just a little bit, these veins that I drew. So one brush to drop color, one brush to smooth it out. And then I'm gonna use my color dropping brush to go ahead and just do a dark layer of green just underneath. Here. And just be mindful about going around 
these petals, use that little brush tip. And then let's keep this stem light, keep it a light green. So moving around that stem, working around these petals, use a brush with a, that has a nice point to it that uh, will help with that process. You wanna use the right tool for the job and the round brush that has a nice point on the end is gonna be your best friend. As soon as your brush gets really splayed and it's like the same thickness all the way across, that's, you need to retire that brush. And by retire, I mean throw it away or, or give it away. My grandma used to give me her old paint brushes. She was an oil painter when I was a kid because I was always trying to be like, Grandma, can I paint with you? Can I use your paint brushes? And she had like really nice stuff. So she would save all of her, her reject um, paint brushes and she would send us into the backyard with a bucket of water. And she's like, here, go ahead and paint the cement porch. <laughs> so we'd just be painting with water on the concrete with her old brushes. And we had so much fun, we loved it. So maybe, <laughs> maybe some kids in your life can do that with your old watercolor brushes. All right, so that's going pretty good. While this is still wet, I'm gonna just drop a little bit of extra dark color in there just to add a little bit more, a little bit more drama. Let's see. And as this is kind of drying quickly, I think I can just go ahead and, and if yours is drying quickly too, maybe you can do the same. Just draw these, let's go ahead and draw some really light veins with just that finest point. If you want to here, you can switch to your size uh, one or two, whatever you have. Something with a really small edge. But my size five brush is working just fine. So I'm gonna use that. Julian, after you get done with that, can you hold up your reference page mm -hmm. when you get done just to kind of see people where you are there and, and the actual finished piece too, so they can kind of see how they're, mm -hmm. how it's going. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of work in, in this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is where we're working towards. Getting there. See it. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's a process. All right. So I'm going to leave that alone for now. And I'm going to, let's go over to this, this stem here. And let's just make this a darker green color. Grabbing more sap green. Sometimes the words escape me just as I'm trying to say them. Some more sap green. And we're gonna do that same technique that we did earlier where I just dropped some of that Darker green around the edge. <laughs> Pablo is, is having a rough time right now, you guys. Our new neighbor also, has, our neighborhood, sorry, has a lot of dogs and a lot of people walk in their dogs and our, our old house did not have that. So there's always some dogs for them to look at and bark at. All right, so I'm using my damp brush to smooth that color out. My goodness, actually my paper is drying super quickly today. So I'm actually having to like scrub that color a little bit to get it to move. And I just dropped it down like 30 seconds ago. Thirsty paper. Okay, drop more color. Um, and I'll go ahead and just do what I did earlier. Just go ahead and trace these lines just a little bit here. I'm gonna start working towards making these veins a little bit darker. If, if, if your paper's wet and it's just bleeding that color out, and it looks like too dark, just grab your paper towel and just blot it. Maybe wait for it to be just a little bit more dry. Mine is kind of half and half, like down here is pretty wet. 
over here, it let me, uh, my paper, let me draw these darker lines. And it's kind of nice to have that mix too. Makes it look kind of loose. All right, dropping a little bit more color. So this leaf, just a note here is, is gonna be, it's, it should be a little bit of a shadow here because you know, this flower is in front of it. So you can drop a little bit of extra sap green just behind those petals. And that helps to create like a different um, plane. So it feels like that leaf is pushed back a little bit and the flower is pushed forward. And then the last green detail I'll do for right now is I'm gonna use that point, just go along the edge of these little um, stems down here. And I want you to just drop a little bit of extra green here just underneath the flower petals. And that's kind of creating that little bit of a shadow and it's creating that plane. Does that make sense? All right, using my damp clean brush, smooth that out just a little bit. Drop a little bit more green on these outer edges. Um, I will do one more detail here. Just underneath the, uh, the petals here for this flower, I'm gonna drop a dark green right there. And I'm going to drop that green along the outer edge of this stem. And then I'll go ahead and use my damp brush to just very gently smooth that out. And a little bit of extra sap green just at the base of this flower bud. All right, let me check how I'm doing on time. Okay, we're good. All right, so now I'm going to move over to the flowers. They're needing, needing some detail. So go ahead and get a mixture of sap green, or not sap green, um, ultramarine <laughs> colors, uh, alizarin crimson. So get some alizarin crimson mixed here, and I'm going to do a pretty strong mixture here. Lots of color. I want this to be a, a little bit more of a rich, deep color here. just rubbing my bristles around in that color, kind of getting it going. All right, so I'm gonna start up at the top and this part of the process, um, how should I say this? Um, this definitely takes some, some real thought. This process of like deepening flowers it's, it takes some real like critical thinking, I would say. Like you really have to think about like, okay, where would it make sense for there to be darker color? And so anytime that there's an overlap of petals, think about like where it would make sense for there to be a little bit of a shadow. So between these two petals, there's this one that's in the background. It, may, it would make sense for that one to have a little bit of shadow on it, right? So I'm using my damp brush and I'm gonna smooth that color out just a little bit upwards. All right, and I'm going to just in uh, these petals here, same thing. So kind of think like, here's a little, um, a little trick. Pablo, you're messing with my light, bud. Go on. So think about this, the petals, the closer they are to the center of the flower, the darker I want you to make them. And then the, the tips of the petals, the further they from the center, make that lighter. Make sense? I'm 
some overlapping here, here, here. Smooth it out. So one brush to drop color, one brush to smooth it out. See how we're just already starting to create so much dimension. And I'm just using one color, just alizarin crimson. And so we just have a light layer of alizarin crimson and then a darker layer of alizarin crimson. So for these three petals, you remember how we drew the two lines? I want you to keep that outer little bit light. Let me pull this in for you. So as we're working right here, let's get a close shot. Hey, shh, no. All right, same thing here. So we're dropping this really dark mixture of alizarin crimson, keeping this part light, just that little teeny part where it looks like it's turning. And if you accidentally drop color in a spot you don't want to, just grab your paper towel, blot it. Drop a little bit of extra color here because I want that spot to be a little darker. This is like two uh, petals overlapping one another. So go ahead and drop some dark color on the, the petal that is being overlapped. Make sense? All right. And for these two petals here, let's uh, keep it simple. I'm just going to draw a little bit of or paint a little bit of pink where this one's being overlapped, smooth it out. Um, I think this is feeling good. I'm just kind of taking inventory for a second, smoothing paint in a few spots where I think it needs it. Feels good. All right, that's where I'm gonna stop for that flower for now. I will come back and add a little bit more later. Let's work on this little bud here. So I want the bottom of it to be a nice alizarin crimson layer here. And same, same um, concept that I was saying earlier, just think about making the bottom of these petals darker than the tops of them. So smooth that color out, smoothing it upwards. And then we have these little crevices here. Go ahead and drop some darker color in between the intersection of those petals there. And then use your damp brush to gently pull it upward. So dropping color with one, smoothing with the other. A lot of these steps, I'm just kind of <laughs> saying the same, uh, same techniques over and over, using the same techniques over and over. That's good practice for everyone. And by the time you get to that last one. <laughs> say, that, say that again, Tim. It's, there's a lot of flowers. So it's a lot of good practice within here. It is. Of how to do that, drop it down and then spread it out with the other brush. Mm -hmm. Yep, you're always using those same techniques over and over and over. And the more you practice with them, the more comfortable you'll become and it'll be feel very second nature after a while. A lot of people will be like, oh my gosh, how do you do that? Like, how do you create these paintings? I'm like, just using some techniques. You just use some, learn a few techniques and practice a little bit and it becomes, becomes second nature after a while. Just take some practice getting familiar with those techniques. All right, so I'm gonna stop there for now on that one. I say that and then I keep painting. <laughs> um, now I'll stop. Okay, I'm gonna go to the, the 
focal point of our painting, which is this large flower here. So guess what I'm gonna say? One brush to drop paint, one brush to smooth it out. And I'm gonna start at the bottom, bottom of this petal here, and then use my damp, mostly clean brush here to smooth that color upwards. And also I have been kind of like, I'm mostly watching the, what I'm doing, <laughs> but I do see some, some um, chats, little uh, thing, like I've seen a couple of things that were directed to me, but I wasn't able to read it quickly. So just, just letting you know, I'm not really able to read the chat as I'm painting, but hopefully you're getting your questions answered that are directed towards me. And um, also there was a, one time I noticed that there was a bunch of people sending me pictures of their paintings in like the message feature, which I think is, I don't even know how that works, but I'm not able to see those. So if you want to show me your finished painting, you can send me an email or send me a direct message on Instagram or share it to Instagram and tag me in it. And you can tag Michaels and Lindsay and Newton. I would love to see what you did. And at the end of the class, I'll, I'll ask everybody to show me your paintings before you go. <laughs> that always makes me so happy to see. Everyone how to connect with you right now. So if they want to connect with you on the website or Instagram and your YouTube mm -hmm. channel. Yes, lots of places. All right, so we're bringing, bringing out some dimension, huh? I hope that if you're painting along with me, you're, you're really happy with how yours is looking. Sometimes it just takes like discovering one new technique and then it's like, light bulb. I love how my paintings look now. All right, so this one here, and we got that line right there. So that looks like this petal is starting to turn uh, that way. <laughs> So keep that spot light, just that edge over here on the left side. Smoothing that color out. My paint is drying on my palette. Kind of goofed here, I just dropped that color where I didn't want it. So I'm gonna use that paper towel just to lift it. No harm done. So using my damp brush, smoothing that out. I think there's a dog hair on my painting. One second. Sometimes you'll notice that your damp edge will get really dry and so you're not really like able to move color very well. So just dip it in water real quick, blot it. I kind of, my, my arm will go out of frame a lot and that's what I'm doing. I'm just dipping my brush in water, blotting it just so that, um, so that that edge is in a, in a manner that is helpful for me to use. <laughs> it becomes very intuitive after a while. Sometimes I don't even realize that I'm dipping my brush in water and people look like, why are you moving your hand away so much? That's what I'm doing. So a lot of times also I'm lifting a bunch of paint and then I'll just blot it because I don't want that much color. And my bristles, I like to keep it clean. And these, these, these three uh, petals right here, I wanna keep the center one light and then I'll this light pink and then I'll drop a little bit of this darker alizarin crimson on each side here and smooth out that color. So now it looks like there's some overlap here. These uh, lotus flowers remind me of peonies. I don't know if anybody else is getting that same feeling, but they have a very similar kind of shape. So if you can paint a lotus flower, you can probably paint a peony. We actually taught a Michael's class of a peony last year. I think it was last year or 2020. 
you go back into the archives, I believe we have a peony class there that I taught. All right, just a couple more petals. And hope you'll forgive me if you feel like I'm moving a little bit quickly today. I, there are a few more things I wanna do before the end of the class, which yeah, we're good. You just move at whatever pace feels good for you. And then if you still need some help, you can watch the replay, which will be available in a day, right Tim? Something like that. Yes, 24 hours after the class is over with. So I'm on Eastern time. So roughly about 24 hours right now. You can either go to the um, michaels.com website. It'll be featured there under the classes. Or you can just go right into the Michaels YouTube channel and look at the videos there as well. And if you sort out the newest, it'll be right on top for you. All right. So I want you to now grab your larger brush that you have. And we're going to do a technique called wet on wet. So what I'm going to do, and this might be tricky because like I was saying, my paper's drying super fast today. I'm going to just drop water, All right? Starting up here at the top, just drop water, clean water. And go around these petals. And then what I want you to do is grab some ultramarine blue or whatever blue you have. And I'm gonna just drop it in there. I'm not really brushing it in. Maybe, maybe in a couple spots I'm gonna brush it, but mostly I wanna just drop it in. And I wanna let the water start to pull that color. And the water, I want the water to kind of decide where that paint is gonna end up. So this is called a wet on wet wash. And then we're gonna go around all of this painting, staying within these lines. So you'll notice that um, the paint you're dropping is only going to go where there's water. It won't go anywhere else. It'll only follow the water. I'm just going to go ahead and cover a lot of, a lot of real estate here at once. I'm using a lot of water, so it shouldn't dry too quickly. Right in here, in between this leaf and this little bud, I'm going to grab some ultramarine blue. Drop it in there. And so this kind of, you know, could, you can decide what this is. The sky, the pond, maybe it's water. Maybe it's the sky, who knows? Maybe we'll let the painting decide. Whatever, however your painting looks, you can decide if it's sky or if it's water. So I'm kind of doing a mixture of brushing and dropping. I'm gonna let that keep on finding its uh, finding its way, deciding how it's gonna dry. Same thing down here. So drop some water. I'm gonna do it between all of these little stems. I'm just going to drop some blue in here. And then we'll just let that all dry. That really makes it all the flowers pop right off the paper. Mm -hmm. It right. sure does. Yeah, I love the way that's looking. 
All right, so let's go back to this alizarin crimson mixture. And using a small brush with a nice point, I'm gonna actually use the size six that's already in my hand just because it, it has a good point. So I wanna come back to these flowers that should be dry and just go and draw some like little wispy veins on a few of these little petals. Work where it's only where it's dry. If your petals are wet, this is just going to bleed right out. It has to be a dry um, petal you're doing this on. You don't have to be perfect. Just follow the direction that the that the petal is facing. They don't have to be perfectly spaced out. Kind of just a little bit of an effect. Do it on these larger or these uh these petals that are facing upward, do it on the back side of these little petals and over here. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that one be. All right, now we're going to grab a new color that we haven't used yet. Um, I want you to grab some burnt sienna. And we're gonna use burnt sienna. Maybe you can mix it with a little bit of cadmium yellow. So it's not too intense. So it's more of a orangey yellow. And then come to your stamen here and I want you to just dab some color right over that yellow. And that's gonna just make it look a little less one dimensional. Kind of look like there's some something else going on in there, some different colors some shadows. Not gonna overthink it. All right, final finishing touches here. And timed it just right. <laughs> um, okay, so I want you to grab some um, alizarin crimson and a little bit of ultramarine blue. Just a little bit, not too much. And this is going to be a strong mix of color here. I want you to really work some of that color out if you're working with dried paint here, you gotta really rub your bristles in there. So it's gonna be almost like a deep, like a burgundy color, okay? So once you have a good amount of color in your bristles, we're gonna come back to our flowers and just add just a tiny bit more drama. And just in a few spots where I want it to be just a little bit extra, a little bit extra color, a little bit more of a depth of color. Just underneath here, just in those spots where it would make sense that maybe there'd be like the really kind of deep crevice in between these petals. So dropping color with one brush and then I'm going to smooth that out just a little bit. I'm not trying to feather it out to the, to the very end of the petal per se but I'm just gonna smooth that color so it doesn't look like just a dark blob, you know what I mean? And you can follow your intuition here. If you see a spot that you think your painting would look good with a little bit of extra dark color, go easy here. <laughs> you don't wanna make it add it everywhere. It has more punch if it's a little bit more sparingly used. Um, this one, I'm going to leave that one just like it is. And then down here on this uh, vocal flower, vocal point. These flowers look very similar, don't they? This is kind of just the little one to practice on. And then <laughs> this is the, uh, the focal point. So I think for the most part, I kind of worked on that one first, huh? Hey, Shailene, this is Felicia. I'm just going to jump in real quick. 
Okay. And let the participants know that if you want to save the chat, um, this will be a great point uh, before she asks everyone to show their pictures. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and save the chat um, before the end of class. Thank you. Okay, so just a few little spots here. All right, I think the last thing I'm gonna do is just here towards the center stamen. And so a drop color and smooth it out just a little bit. And I think that that feels like a good place to stop. So once your painting is totally dry, give it a few minutes, you can come back with an eraser and then uh, move, uh, erase as much of these lines as you can. And so let me go ahead and hold this up for you for a minute. Got some funny lighting happening right now, but hopefully that, that is easy to see. So let me pull in my other one that I worked on. And I would actually love, like Felicia was saying, if you would take a minute and hold up your painting so I could see it. I'm gonna go to the grid view. Is that how I see it all? Or no, I go to, I've done Zoom. The gallery view. 100 gallery. times <laughs> gallery view. So if you guys wouldn't mind, can you hold up your finished painting or just wherever you're at if you, if you want to. Awesome. Wow, these look very beautiful. Amazing. Thank you, guys. So while and if you, you guys it, are showing Shaylene your, your photos, just so you know, in the chat window, there are three dots next to the smiley face. When you click on the three dots, you'll see save chat. I didn't know that. That's awesome. <laughs> well, okay. So one last thing. Uh, we are going to be doing a herb class in February. So we actually did one, um, gosh, I don't remember when it was, it was last fall. October. It was in October. October. Mm -hmm. yep. So we worked on three different herbs. And so we are going to do a part two class. So the, the, that class is available for you to go watch that replay. And then you can join this one if you want to, and we'll work on oregano, parsley, and thyme. And I'm really looking forward to that class. And that's going to be Tim, remind me of the date of that class. That date will be February 15th at 1 p.m. And if you log in to sign up for that class, there's actually a link in the login for you to replay the class from October. So those of you who that want to see the class before and, and do those three herbs and then want to take part and then do three more, that'll give you six in total. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to that. And thank you guys so much for joining today for our Lotus class. I hope you enjoyed. And I would love it if you would share it on social media and tag me so I can get a good close up of all your, your hard work. So thank you guys so much. Have a beautiful day. See you soon.